331 BC. Alexander the Great is on the attack, taking on the massive Persian army of Darius, King of Kings. Can Darius hold on to his colossal empire, or will the hot-headed young Alexander seize it from him by force? Commanding one of the armies is a team of childhood friends. But will their 33-year friendship stand up in the heat of battle? Send, send the cavalry from the hill. I just said that, actually. <laughs> I just wasn't listening to you, Nigel. These comrades in arms must not only carry the day, but impress two military experts. I want to get stuck in. This will be a bloody battle of epic proportions. The team have got to hold them by the nose and kick them in the nuts. This is Time Commanders. With Eddie Mayer in our 21st century war room are a team of childhood friends. Richard Marshall, freelance photographer, rank general. Richard Spencer, business strategy manager, rank general. John Fox, communications manager, rank lieutenant. Nigel Davis, eye surgeon, rank lieutenant. Childhood friends, eh? Uh, John, mm -hmm. uh, former rat catcher and pest controller, you look a bit like the guy who cheated on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> I do appreciate that. that. That's why there's no prize money. It has been noticed. Now, you're all 30-somethings. Here we are. Mm -hmm. But you've been friends since you were how old? Five. 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 What's kept you together all this time? We know each other so well that there's sort of nothing we can say that'll insult them enough to make them go away. <laughs> we'll just keep coming back we to get our own back. Believe me, we have tried. All right, Nigel, you were captain of the fencing team at Oxford? I was. So you enjoy fighting in, in some civilised form? Yes. What about these sort of battles? You all as a group like to do this kind of thing, strategy games, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, particularly when we were in our teens, we played a lot of war gaming in Dungeons and Dragons and Risk and things like that. So uh, we're kind of trying to recapture that youth today, hopefully. So you are good at this kind of thing. Victory is imminent, is it? Yes. Fortune favours the brave. Let's find out more about the battle you're going to fight. Down here are our uh, experts, uh, Mark and Eric. Gentlemen, if you come up, they've been uh, checking all the fine details of the battle you're going to fight, making sure that every aspect of it is as historically accurate as we can get away with. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Mark Urban military historian and author. Right, you are being given the Battle of Galgamila. Oh yes. Now, Galgamila is in modern day Iraq uh, by the uh, Iranian border. You are Alexander the Great and his army, one of the greatest armies in all of military history. Your opponents are the Persians. You've already beaten them twice and their empire is hanging there like a ripe peach. The name of the game is Regime Change. You've got to go in, take over their empire, and you won't be able to do that by just sitting down and reading the entrails of your sacrifices. They outnumber you, but remember, you're Macedonians. Who said fortune favors the brave? I did. You guys are coming up against a vast army. They will massively outnumber you. And the only way that you're going to survive to create your own empire out in the east is by taking the initiative. Before battle commences, the team must gather military intelligence. First up is a survey of the terrain. The battlefield is a broad, flat plain with a river on one side and some rocky hills on the other. But neither will offer any flank protection to the team's small Macedonian army. It is early morning on the 1st of October, 331 BC. Waiting across the other side of this dusty, featureless plain is the massive Persian army of Darius, King of Kings. 
it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly flat, mm -hmm. and then yeah. it, it's, I don't know if that's a, must be a slope down to the river there, and then another hill, a slope up to the hill. Yeah. I think the question for us is the degree to which we want to get drawn into this. Yeah, we well, definitely don't want to go into the middle bit there. If you could use the steep hills to stop them coming around, that would yeah. any troops going to go up a hill, going to come down, that's going to take them a bit of time, isn't it's it? So that could be a natural river. sort of barrier to them going that way. Whereas if we have so our troops, could, especially the cavalry, somewhere, I don't know, up, well, they can I, come I, down. No? Yeah. Well, the only thing is, if we spend too long just sort of waiting, trying to be too clever, I wonder whether we're just going to get ourselves boxed in. Richard Spencer has correctly identified that the need for aggression is far more important than the geographical features of the battlefield, which offer little tactical advantage to their troops. But will the team take Richard's advice? Before making a final decision, the team must first recce their own army. Lieutenants John and Nigel can now inspect Alexander the Great's Macedonian army to find out about the troops they will control in battle. It is vital that the generals understand which lieutenant controls which troops. The team's 47,000 strong army is outnumbered more than three to one by the Persians. The key Macedonian attack troops are the companion cavalry, the noblemen closest to Alexander the Great both at court and in war. The core of their army is the tough, heavy infantry, the Pike Phalanx. The team must coordinate these troops to outwit the vast army they face. Can we go through sort of fairly methodically what each of the bunches are? Just start okay, out. so these, these guys here are the group generals. General at the front, then, then what's after that next them you've got the uh, pikemen. Pikemen, okay, we've got four of them. The Macedonian pikemen are armed with an 18 foot pike. These disciplined professional soldiers fight shoulder to shoulder their pikes thrust forward in a formation known as the phalanx. The hedgehog-like phalanx advances slowly and is almost unstoppable as long as it can hold formation. Look at all those points. In order to get to the men in this phalanx, you've got to get past one row, two rows, three rows, four rows, five, row upon row of points out in front of these soldiers. They're very well protected as long as they stick together. Then you've got some heavy cavalry. These guys are going to be great for punching a hole maybe through infantry. Alexander's army does what the Soviet army used to call sword and shield. The shield, the infantry, fix the enemy in place. And then the sword, the cavalry, strike the enemy. In previous encounters with the Persians, Alexander the Great used his pike phalanx to fix the Persian front line. His companion cavalry would then seek out weak points in the enemy ranks and attack with devastating effect. Alexander's tactics can be summarized uh, in George Patton's phrase, hold them by the nose and kick them in the nuts. After the heavy cavalry, you've got three more pike units, okay? Then the archers, and then after them, you've got one block of light cavalry, and then, yeah, and then these guys are the javelin throwers. They've got a, a poorer range than the archers. The javelin men are lightly armored infantry from remote parts of Macedonian territory. Armed with bundles of short throwing javelins, they avoid close combat, but can inflict serious damage with their missiles. Fast and agile, they can move wherever needed on the battlefield to harass enemy lines. Nice. Yeah, tell us what, tell us what you've got. Right, you've got a big unit of cavalry, and then two units of Greek hoplites. They will attack with spears, right. and they're quite quick. The hoplites are Alexander's Greek allies. Armed with a thrusting spear, short sword and large shield, they also fight in a phalanx formation. But with shorter spears, the hoplites are less formidable than the pikemen. These troops would be best used as reserves behind the wall of steel of the pike phalanx. And then behind that you've got two units of infantry and in the middle of those is the general with his small unit of ca heavily armed cavalry. Alexander's most potent weapon on the battlefield was his cavalry. Alexander was a very aggressive commander and he led his cavalry in person. Leading from the front was a risky tactic. At the Battle of the River Granicus three years earlier, Alexander barely escaped with his life. But the sight of the great general charging into battle paid dividends, inspiring his own troops and terrifying the Persians. Right, the Battle of Gagamila. You are Alexander the Great, 
up against Darius, 331 BC, and you still need to know something, don't you, more than you do? We need to know about our enemy. Of course. Yeah, very much. Let's